Let's go to the Word this morning. Let's go. Let's see what we can find. We're in a little series. And I switched gears, to be honest with you. I switched gears. I was in a series on a kid again. And I love that. I'm going to get back to it. But our world went crazy. It's already been going crazy. And uh, so, you know, I thought it was appropriate for me to take some time and address when you come on a Sunday morning God's Word in light of what you're seeing in your world all the time. Amen? That's the air conditioning. We're fine. <laughs> Let's go with it. Let's see what we can find today. Why don't you just look at our wor- the world today? Now, I've been to Israel many, many times. Many times. You take big tours there. I would sing and lead groups through Jerusalem on the Via Dolorosa and, and in Tel Aviv and all kinds of places. We did it for years, and I loved it. And uh, so this, this hits close to home to me. When these places are on your television screen, these are real places, and these are real people, and it's a real mess. And it's not just there. Our whole world has changed. You know that, yes or no? Have you, have you been noticing that? Honestly, maybe a little before COVID, but since COVID on, we've been in warp speed. Warp speed. And if you've been in Florida, my goodness, you also had a big hurricane last year that ripped this area apart. But, I mean, the world is changing, and it's changing rapidly. Jesus said the last days would come like a woman in travail, like a woman having a baby, like birth pains. And you just can't stop the baby. The baby's coming. Nothing you can do about it. I mean, when that happens with a woman, that baby is coming. It's usually some screaming and crying and it's pain. He described the last days as that. And it seems to me like all the years I've lived, all the years I've been preaching, and I've been a prophetic speaker, that means I've taken these passages for years and I've preached them. They're right in the Bible. But I've, I've lived to see so many things come to pass in my life. And I'm younger than some of y'all. But it's crazy. But the Word of God is true. Won't you say that out loud if you believe it? The Word of God is true. And my message today is going to be, what about you and what about me in these, in these days that we're living? Just look at some pictures. Look at our world today. You see it on TV, but Roger has a few shots for us. We're a world at war today. When the history books are written about the time in which we lived, I firmly believe they will write that we were in World War III. And they'll probably write it didn't start six months from now. It may have started a year or two ago. I don't know how the historians will write the books, if they're even here to write them. But the bottom line, we're a world at war. You hear about Iran all the time. It's a big deal. They represent, whether we like it or not, most of the Muslim world. And people have criticized me for saying that. I don't give a hoot if you criticize me. Spell my name right, Gary with two R's. Okay, they're behind a lot of the mess that you see. It's, it's true. And a lot of people, even, even friendlier Muslim countries, often take their cues from them. And you see that happening right now. Others that would maybe be a little more vocal, they're not. And they're, they're getting in line, it looks like. North Korea, we don't hear much out of them right now, but we know they have nuclear capabilities We know that uh, they're not a friendly nation, for sure. And they're lining up. You've got Hezbollah. You saw him recently on television. Everybody's playing him now and what he had to say. And they're already at war with Israel. You know that, right? They're already at war. He said, we've got about a third of their troops occupied right now. That sounds like a war to me. And Israel's having to respond you got China and Taiwan, that situation. But you also have China lining up with Iran. you got them lining up with Russia. Is that made-up stuff or not? Am I making this up? See, if you'd have been around 50 years ago, you'd have heard preachers like me telling you this would happen in the last days. They would have actually listed these same nations according to God's Word. Now, they didn't know it all. I get that. But they sure made a valiant effort at it. 
And they would name some of these same exact nations and what's happening today in your life is happening right now. Of course, you've got Russia and Ukraine. What a mess that is. And the lives lost. And I've been to Ukraine multiple times. Right down Kiev. Doesn't make me better than somebody. It just means I traveled some. And whenever they did mission work, years ago with doctors, when the Iron Curtain fell, we would go in there and, and help people. And I was there a lot of times for the doctors. Matter of fact, I led so many people to Christ, not because I'm a great guy, but because so many people were hungry for the gospel. They were so hungry for the gospel. I had to take breaks. I had to take breaks from leading people to Christ. The lines were like that to get to me. Not for me to pop them on the head and heal them, to tell them that God loves them and they would put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And we would spend time with them. It was beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, man. We see all that world erupting. And honestly, if you look at a big map, if you look at a big map, these places ain't that far from one another. I'm telling you. Guess who's a long way off? Take a wild guess. We are. We are. It's all going right back over there where the Bible said the last days would be. And, of course, you've got Israel right now fighting Hamas. And you see what happened on October 7th, the slaughter. It was their 9-11. But it was really, you know, really Hitler was their 9-11, okay? Six million Jews out of nine million were slaughtered. But then this is the greatest slaughter they've endured since that time. It's crazy. And so they're fighting back. And they're pushing Hamas out. That's what that's all about. But i got a feeling it's a lot more than that. And uh, I personally, as your pastor, and you don't have to agree with me. Don't agree with me on everything. That's great. But the bottom line is I believe we're in the last days. I believe we're in the last days. And you might say, what do you know? I don't know much. But I know one thing. I'm in my last days. I'm in my last days. I know I don't have, I'm 61, I just look real good, I know that. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I'm just playing. But the point is, is that I sure don't have 61 more, do I? No, the average age of a man is 78 years old. Do you know that? And a woman's about 81, 82. I know that some of you are shocked. Maybe you start living more happy if you know that... God's been good to you. You've still got a breath in your lungs. Maybe you'll shut your mouth and quit being ugly to people and be nice to people. You ain't even supposed to be here. Come on, love people, amen? Come on, love people, man. Here we go. And then we've got the United States. We're all involved in all of this, aren't we? Yes or no? And you see that? These aren't just a ship that's being sent there. We have carrier groups that have been sent there. And other people smarter than me can explain all that to you. But carrier groups have 7,500 to 10,000 soldiers with them. And we have two, if not even more, groups like that already over there. We're poised right now for World War III. And whether you like it or not, or whether I like it, and... Uh, so that's the world we live in right now. Y'all know that or not? And I know the Apostle Paul was looking for the Lord to return. The Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour when Christ will return. Is that true? So I'm not giving you a day nor hour. I just personally believe that we're in the last days. That's what I believe. Do I know how long? I don't know how long, but I do know this. When Paul lived, there wasn't the capability to just wipe mankind off the face of the earth. That capability exists now. We are funding and giving weapons to a country called Ukraine who has their own problems. But we're giving those, and those are being used to kill Russians. Got it? Now, if I was a Russian, I wouldn't appreciate that too much. And Russians have a greater nuclear arsenal than we do. I'm just saying this is a ticking time bomb. And the thing that happened while people were at a concert three weeks ago was like they're just singing and having a good time. 
all hell started to break loose. Now, we saw Russia, Ukraine, we see China, we see Taiwan, we see we're all tied up. We're in 140 places all over the world with our troops. We're spread thin, our borders wide open, whether you like it or not. People ask, you know, do you think 9-11 will happen again? I think it's going to be more like this, 7-11s. Instead of a big one, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if all over the country we don't have things happening. And you might say, you're a doomer, man. What are you doing? I'm just trying to tell you the truth. This is the world in which we live. If I was you, I wouldn't say, soul, soul, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Jesus said this night, your soul, fool, your soul will be required of you. So I think we should live as if Christ could come at any moment. I don't understand all that. But I do know so much of my Bible that I've been studying and reading and listening to, and I'm sure we don't have it right, and some of the people I was listening to don't just have it right. But I'm surprised at how right they've had it. And now we live here, and this is what we're going through. Look at our country today. Look at our country today. I would have never thought some folks could rise up and butcher people and slice them up and cut their feet off, heads off, and we'd have kids and others on in our, in our cities and states praising these people for doing what they did. It just don't seem like that would have been possible years ago for anybody to get by with that in this country. Y'all hear me or not say? Isn't that crazy? But we've been telling everybody for years, you colleges are crazy in this country. They're teaching crap. If you're watching me and don't like that, you're teaching crap, so many of you. And it's hurting our country, yes or no? Of course it is. How many, when you had children, you sent them off to college, you worried like crazy? Worried like crazy because they're going to be indoctrinated. It shouldn't surprise us. This is happening. So we're, why you might say, Clark, you're really giving it to us today. Well, I am. That's the world. But Inglewood's my town. This is where we live. What are we going to do? How can we fix all this? Bombs flying, people dying. How are we going to fix that? I'm in Inglewood. I'm just one guy. What can I do? What a mess. Look at it. What a mess, my world. But I'm here and it looks pretty good here. Pretty nice. What should I be doing in these last days? What about me? What about me? That's the title of my message, and we're rolling now. We're doing fine. Here we go. What about me? This know that in the last days, say it with me, perilous times shall come. Let's do a check and see if some of these things are coming to pass right now. Men shall be lovers of their own selves in the last days. Covetous. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. I've never heard anything like it today, how people will just say Jesus' name. Now they're saying the name of Jesus with the F word together. All the time. Is that true or false? And that, yes, really, really, really. Yeah, it's your world. And I was a blasphemer of Christ. I was a cusser of Christ. Disobedient to parents. Is that happening? Had a lady in our church, her grown son up in Ohio, strangled her to death. In our church. I went and buried her. Had the service for her. And set her body on fire. Who hears of such stuff? This is crazy. Unthankful. Unholy. Last days this will happen. Without natural affection. Women will actually, instead of having a baby, they will choose to kill the baby. Now you might say, well, that's a woman's choice. No, that's a sign of the last days. This was mentioned a long time ago. It's natural for a woman to love her baby. Is that natural, yes or no? I ain't saying it's easy. But it's unnatural 
And in Maine, the great state of Maine, the great state of Maine, they just passed it last week. If you're a baby, you can actually take the life of a baby that is full nine months, as long as that baby is not out. In Maine? Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, means people are totally out of control. Is that true, yes or no? Fierce. Are people fierce today? Despisers of those that are what? You think I wrote this yesterday. 2,000 years old. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of what? But we still go to church. And most of the churches, I know I'm getting in trouble with this message. I don't give a hoot. Listen, most of the churches that are going to be standing up today, many of those people aren't going to go to heaven. They're preaching something other than Christ, or they're certainly not letting people know that they need to put their faith in Christ. We perverted the gospel. It's about getting you healing, about getting you money. It's about, you know, kissing somebody's ring or somebody's foot or going to a confessional booth. It's about believing in Jesus Christ, that He's the Son of the living God, that He died on a cross, He rose from the dead. It's all about Him. That's what it's about. That's the Bible. So, how, what about me? Here we go. Help me, Roger. You're so slow today. Keep going. Got it. All these things seem to point to the last days. You don't have to be a scientist to figure this out. I've said for years, you know, you have to be a rocket scientist. Our quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings went down last week. We're taking a commercial break. His name is Kirk Cousins. You know who they went and hired to quarterback the Minnesota Vikings? A guy named Dobbs. Did you know he's a rocket scientist? I just thought I'd let you know that. It, well, I'm going to say we don't know, but it, I've always thought if the Vikings ever win a Super Bowl, it'll probably take a rocket scientist. <laughs> this just might happen. Back to the message. Here we go. Back to the message. Here we go. How do the last days, the return of Jesus Christ unfolding relate to you? Here we go. How does it relate to me, Pastor? The last days. What about me? You should look at several things. Check yourself out with the following questions that directly relate relate to you and the return of Christ. Roger, I'm going to go through these questions. They're pretty self-explanatory. Every one of these questions are found in the Bible. They all refer to the last days. I put them in one message real quick for you so you can see it. Okay, Clark, seems like we're in the last days. What about me? What should I be doing? What should I be doing? Here we go. Ready? Let's do it, Rog. What about you? Number one, are you loving people? This is my question to you today. Are you loving people? And the Lord make you increase and abound in love one to another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, He may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you loving people? Are you loving people? Are you caring for people? Are you hateful to people? How do you talk to people? How do you treat people? Jesus said in the last days we should be loving people. Number two, are you judging people? Therefore, judge nothing. That means nobody. Before the time. Until the what? Lord comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. He'll make to manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Are you judging people now? Are you spending your time loving people or judging people? There should be no time right now for us to spend a whole lot of time judging other people. And looking, look at them, look at their hair, look at their tattoos, look at how they dress. How about look at your big mouth? Quit it! These are, these are perilous times! People need us to love! And be strong in the Lord, man. Number three, are you active in your church fellowship or are you active in fellowship church? (laughs) Let us consider one another. Let us provoke one another unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. 
as the manner of some is, and but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. You hear me? It's great to see a good crowd. We have pretty good crowds most of the times. But you know, during times like this, you would think, man, people would be wanting to get here and fill every seat. That's what that's talking about. Let's be active in our church. Not to just do church stuff. Remember, church stuff's all about people. It's all about people. It's all about loving people. Sharing Christ with people. Helping people. Number four, are you remembering the Lord's communion? We're having it in just a few minutes. As often as you eat this bread and you do drink your cup, you show the Lord's death until He what? Comes again. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Number five, are you committed to living for Jesus Christ? I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the who, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His what? Appearing in His kingdom. Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Be nice if churches got back to the Bible. Quit teaching, quit teaching the bull, man. It's time for us to preach the Word. Preach Jesus. Number six. How are you doing? Are you responding to life spiritually? If you're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on this earth. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall what? Appear. Then shall you also appear with Him in glory. This is how we should be. What about me? What about me? This is how me should be. In the last days. Number seven. Are you keeping short sin accounts? And now little children abide in Him that we, when He shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed. Not be ashamed at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone that does righteousness is born of Him. It's time we get right with God. Y'all hear me? Things been dogging you for years. This is the time to say, not anymore. I'm going to give this to Christ. He's going to help me. I'm going to turn from this and turn to Him. Number eight, are you sharing Jesus Christ with family and friends? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It's talking about you and people. Some have compassion on them. Make a difference in somebody's life by loving them. Some others you save with fear. Sometimes that's going to happen. They're going to need to know that this that and all there is, you're going to die. There's a place called hell. There's a place called heaven. Where are you going, man? Pull them out of the fire, some of them. What does that mean? Don't forget the bad people like me and my mama. Some of us sinners out there, we were, we were closer to hell. We lived like hellions. Thank God for people that love sinner people. Amen? Don't forget that. Number nine. Last days. What about me, God? The whole world seems to be blowing. What, what can I do? Are you comforting others? I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those which have died asleep. Don't sorrow as others which have no hope. For if we believe, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede those which have died. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Again, I don't know how all this is going to take place, but I know very firmly it's in the word of God repeatedly. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Say those last words with me. Wherefore what? Comfort one another with these words. Need to be doing that in the last days. Number ten. Are you patiently anticipating Christ's return? Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth. He's got long patience for it 
until it receives the early and latter rain. You be patient. Establish your heart. Say that with me. For the coming of the Lord draws nigh. That's the Word of God. Was that hard? Let's look at the test. What about me? What about me? Let's take a test. How'd you do? How'd you do? Loving others? Yes. Judging others? No. Active in church? Serving? Yes. Communion? Yes. Living for Christ? Yes. Responding spiritually? Yes. Keeping short sin accounts? Yes. Sharing Jesus? Yes. Comforting others? Yes. Anticipating Christ's return? I'm not saying I got all those down pat, but that's what we should say. Let's thank the Lord for His Word. We're done. We're out of here. Amen. Boop.